José Mateus, who is from uh, Portugal. Uh, o senhor que teve uma, uma, uma fala em Portugal, de nós dois, ele é de família, ele é um de de todos, ele é de Nóris, Lisboa. Porque nós somos de Nóris, ele é de um estudo de ARX Architects Portugal, que eu passo a que já posso chamar de ir. José, por favor. Ok. Let's start. Well, uh, thank you very much, first of all, for this invitation. Uh, I mean, it's a great pleasure and an honor to be here. And uh, of course, uh, related with my activity at the Triennial, I can imagine the, the great effort involved in this organization. I mean, this is a, a huge challenge to, to design these events, to get all the money to organize, to put all things together. And uh, since I arrived here, it was a pleasure, and so I want to thank you uh, very much for this. Well, I'm not going to speak about my activity related with the triennial. I'm, I'm more going to speak about my activity as an architect, as an architect who has the privilege to, to, to design buildings and build. And uh, uh, this starts uh, in my activity with my brother at my office, ARX Portugal. And my office uh, was founded uh, basically in Berlin in 1991, when we were uh, in Berlin uh, working with Daniel Libeskind. And of course, since we are Portuguese, we, we decided to move back to Lisbon, where we are based since then uh, for this activity. Um, but one important aspect is that we start doing, doing public competitions. I mean, we didn't have the, the contacts to get uh, clients easily. So since Portugal uh, joined the European community in, 80, in 1986, uh, we had a huge amount of new projects for public buildings and facilities starting in the early 90s. And since all the public buildings must follow public competitions for the project, uh, um, young architects like me at that moment had the possibility to win uh, projects and to start uh, building our ideas. Uh, the early years were a bit confusing because as all, I believe, uh, young architects, we were a bit anxious with the identity, with reaffirming kind of lexicon of vocabulary through which we could be recognized. Of course, uh, some years later, we start uh, recognizing that uh, uh, we were interested in a different thing. We were interested in, in specificity of each case, of each context, each client, each program. So the difference between uh, two projects is the thing that uh, gives us, I would say, the, the energy for the project and this is the, 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 the most important part of our activity. It's like turning into zero again, starting to uh, investigate uh, from the beginning. And, uh, but uh, besides this, we were always um, focused on trying to build very precise concepts in each project with clear ideas, clear strategy that would, uh, in a very natural way, um, come up from each context. Uh, and of course, uh, like many other architects, uh, we believe in the power of uh, uh, a precise structured met methodology. I mean, we built lots of models, models from the site, models from the concept, models from the program, models from details and so on. Uh, sometimes more than 300 models in one project to, uh, to, to, to be able, in the end, if possible, to reach a clear idea. Uh, and like many uh, architects, and uh, uh, may, maybe I sound a bit conservative, but uh, for us, architecture is much about light, but about about space, about time, about memory, about uh, the possibility of material and technology to be part of the of the concept. Uh, my presentation today is going to uh, to go through through six different projects, three houses, and through these six projects, I believe that the idea that architecture is about the possibility of transformation, but uh, transformation uh, controlled by uh, maybe uh, uh, an almost obsession to find the fundamentals for that transformation, 
with, in a, uh, with a sense of a poetical approach. I'm going to show you these this three houses. A house uh, in Lisbon, a house in the south of Portugal, and a house near Cascais, which is a, a small city uh, not far from Lisbon. And I'm going to show you these three buildings, and I mean three buildings because these two images are about the same building, a museum and then the extension, uh, a school and uh, a shopping center. The house in Juzu. Juzu is, a, I would say, is a, um, a suburb of Cascais, uh, this small city that is located uh, 15 kilometers far to the west from Lisbon. And it's a kind of nostalgic area um, with houses that were, um, I mean, uh, maybe built from uh, projects that were, that were done in a, few, in a few weeks without exigence, uh, without a sense uh, from where, where the natural light came uh, to where should we open the windows in a, in a way that uh, everybody who lives there feel all the time that the neighbor is looking to their pri private uh, own life. Uh, it's a very, I would say, conservative um, context, uh, almost reactionary, where the idea of modernism is, uh, seems to be almost impossible to explore. This is a, an aerial view of the, of the site. Uh, this is a drawing where you can see that is a, a kind of fragmented suburb. This is the, the house, and this, is, uh, this house is part of an urban plan that defines a contradiction, which is the, the lots are narrow and all the houses must be placed in the southern part of the plot. I mean, without the possibility of turning uh, windows to south to get the most appropriate light. And uh, in this case, we decided to explore uh, the project, uh, trying to first uh, work with uh, the most common uh, materials of the modernism, concrete, uh, metal and, and, and uh, glass, and trying to take advantage of this limitation uh, of the house pose on the south side of the plot, uh, uh, excavating the volume, trying to uh, conduct the, the light, natural light properly into the house, uh, and these are the first two essential aspects. Here you can see uh, some early mo uh, models trying to explore the concept, and this is the final model that I'm going to explain. This is a this is a conceptual model where you can see that the uh, that the idea of excavating the the roof uh, is the the first step for the house to get the appropriate light that comes from this side. This the plot has one limit here. Uh, a wall, uh, we cannot turn uh, windows to south, so we get the natural light from uh, the top. But uh, there are uh, conditions in this project that you only understand if we build the, 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 um, this urban area with the future houses that are going to be side by side with the, the house that we built. If you don't see this, this image with the, the houses almost imposing their presence or imposing their presence to the neighbors and looking to the private life of the, of the neighbors, you would not understand the next, the images of the, of the house built that seems to be like a kind of a monument because at this time it is still isolated. As, it, as you see, uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, a close uh, volume uh, with patios uh, preparing a very intimate, very private uh, internal world uh, and uh, a kind of volume that is floating to liberate the, the ground floor to, uh, that is uh, as transparent uh, as possible to, to give the notion of a, a bigger house uh, and this is in fact a very small house with 250 uh, square meters. These are the plans. Uh, in the plans, you can feel four, four different conditions that this house or this. What's that mean? Oh, okay. Um, we have an underground level, which is a space uh, with natural light coming from excavations around 
uh, around uh, around the internal space. This is one excavation. This is another. This is another. Uh, the ground floor. Uh, um, the ground floor is a social area where we had decided to take take out the limits. I mean, the limits are made uh, in a, in the biggest part by with uh, with uh, glass, creating the idea that the house is bigger and the limits are not these walls around the house, but in fact the walls that configure the plot. Uh, the third floor is the, the, the bedrooms area, is where the house is in fact close to the interior, to the intimate uh, uh, spaces that are this main big patio and this smaller patio for the, the parents' bedroom. And of course the fourth uh, floor, which is the roof, where they can uh, see the, the, the Sintra uh, mountain and the um, Guinness Beach, which is well known by the competitions of surf and windsurf and, uh, and so on. These are some sections and one image of the house. Here you can see this is a very small house and um, through the, the utilization of the glass we ensure this kind of fusion between the exterior and the interior. And the upper floor, uh, it's like a, a rough volume that, uh, that uh, imprisons inside the space, but also the light that, that is conducted to the interior, like you are going to see. Of course, now it's a kind of uh, aggressive monument, but as I told you before, you, you need to imagine this house with the other houses around, just next to this uh, uh, to this now isolated uh, house. You can see that uh, we are in the main living room and in fact we almost feel that the limits of the house are the, the, the walls that configure the plot. And here you can see the reflection of the natural sunlight coming down. Um, in the interior, some compartments don't hit the, the ceiling in order to produce this idea of continuity and fluidity of the space to grow the, the main areas of the social area. And here you can see an image of the kitchen, which is uh, uh, almost an uh, uh, airplane, um, I don't know the name, the place where is the pilot, very small, but it grows by the utilization of the, with the utilization of the glass. The underground floor uh, is a, it's a space where you don't feel trapped because it always has a, a natural sunlight coming from the excavations, the small patios around. And this is the, the main patio on the upper floor. You see here the doors for the bedrooms and the, the patio. I imagine this patio with the, the tree that is coming from, from the garden, crossing the architecture and furniture, furniture outside in a very uh, friendly atmosphere. That is now the case because the, the owners built this house to sell, uh, to negotiate, to get money. In the end, they decided to, to, to live in this house and they, they sold their own house. This is the stair for the, for the roof, which is a kind of a belt there. And this is the, 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 the view that we have uh, upstairs. And here you can see uh, the, the nature of the, the, the section of the house where we try to, to create a, a complex uh, possibility of views or cross views between upper and top floors. The house in Pusenko, uh, it's completely different. It's uh, even smaller, it's a 200 square meters house. Pusenko is uh, 100 <coughs> kilometers to the south of Portugal. It's, this is the place. Uh, it's a very small village, a recent uh, village, uh, uh, located in front of an agricultural land and with the possibility to look to the Arabida mountain, which is particularly beautiful. 
Here you can see the urban structure, it's not so different from the previous that we have seen, less dense. This is the house, it's kind of a triangle that results from the shape of the plot, which is a triangle. Nobody wanted to buy this plot because it appears that it would be very difficult to design a house with this plot, but in the end our client decided to, to buy it. Um, Part of the regulations for this urban uh, area uh, were uh, related with traditions in Portugal, such as, uh, in this case you see an image of Evra. Evra is a almost complete, uh, besides the roofs, completely white city uh, in Alentejo, it's a beautiful city. And uh, uh, the urban uh, um, regulations established in this case that the house should be, uh, should be white and the roof should be uh, this traditional double uh, plan roof. And um, we found this uh, very interesting because it was a possibility to investigate on this uh, traditional uh, ancestral ways of uh, thinking a house. These are images that I took from a book that was produced from an inquiry done during the 50s in Portugal that uh, was an exploration on popular traditional architecture. This big inquiry involved many of the most famous architects and was a success in terms of uh, edition. Many architects of my generation and the previous generations read this, uh, this book and this uh, operated a big influence in the contemporary architecture in Portugal. So that's, that's the reason maybe why uh, Portuguese architecture is so attached to the, the most um, important aspects of the traditional popular architecture. In this case I was interested in these very, very long roof houses that maybe are a bit dark in the center, even if it's this darkness it's nice during the very hot summer and we from time to time have 45 degrees there, but then a kind of abstract volume with small excavations to get sunlight uh, to the interior. And uh, in terms of the exterior material, we have in the south of Portugal this uh, technology which is uh, the mud architecture covered with clay that I found also here in Kosovo. Uh, but uh, this is, uh, I would say, the material that covers 80% of the houses in the south of Portugal. At least it used to cover the popular houses. So. Starting in this uh, project, uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, conceptual model shows somehow the, the, the idea of house came up. Uh, white house with a roof like this, the triangular house, and then uh, a very, very crucial aspect. I mean, um, the entrance, uh, which is this side of the house, is facing the road with the cars, but it's south from where, from where we can get the natural uh, satellites. But on the, uh, on the other side, we have the fantastic view of the, over the agriculture fields and the mountain. So the result uh, is a kind of um, a negotiation between the, the need of the, the natural light and the idea of facing the fantastic uh, view to the, to, the, to the mountain and to the agriculture fields. These are two very simple plans. This is the ground floor, this is the entrance, the road with the cars, and this is the social area with a small kitchen, and this is the, the area for the kids in the, a, a small patio uh, in, in the middle of the volume. On the upper floor, another, another room, bedroom for the kids, and the main room, and uh, here and the room for the guests. In, this, in these sections, you can understand the essential. This house that goes from a recognizable traditional type to some more free uh, in terms of design space. And uh, here you see that uh, the side of the road uh, that is on south is from where we get natural sunlight to the, to the house. Here is an image taken in the internal patio. 
And this is the view from the, the roads. Many people find this house a, a bit weird. I mean, they, they, they ask me why the house doesn't have uh, windows. But the house has windows, but facing the fantastic view, not facing the, the cars. On this side, we have the, the voids trying to capture the light to the, to the internal um, spaces. This is a view from the agriculture uh, lens. You can see the house facing and looking to the to the fantastic agriculture fields. It's a kind of house with two different faces. Like the space is a connection between these two different and opposite faces. But sometimes it seems like a very very humble, small, traditional house. The house in Lisbon is a, a very special project. Well, it's a very special project because it was done for my family. So, it has a different meaning. Not only to me, but also because I, I had the first opportunity to do a house in Lisbon. Inside the city, you can see some images of Lisbon. It's a marvelous city. And uh, a, a city uh, where I feel that it's uh, uh, to me, uh, a challenge to do something. I feel, I wouldn't say that I feel anxious, but I feel that is, uh, um, that is something that we cannot fail. We must do our best uh, in our city. And uh, the history of the city, well, or, well, first before the city, uh, the, the history of the city, the location, this is the parliament, uh, this is a big, uh, a big uh, garden in front of a, uh, a 17th century church and between these two gardens uh, my plot is over here in a very dense uh, street. Here you can see the plot, it's very narrow with a small garden uh, with a small garden uh, facing south and since it's a, a hill has the possibility to to, to gain a fantastic view over the city and the Tagus River. These are two images of the existing house. It's, it's, it was this small house and uh, it was a house built in the beginning of the 20th century and uh, during the 30s they built this uh, on the opposite facade which was in ruins so I decided to demolish and, and start uh, a certain level again. Uh, when I was doing the project, uh, of course I thought that uh, it would be a contemporary house, I mean a house done by or thought by uh, an architect who lives now, but uh, in which I, I would like to, uh, to work with the most common and uh, uh, part of the DNA of the architecture of Lisbon. One of these uh, the DNA aspects is this white stone called uh, Lios that is utilized in the monuments, uh, uh, stairs and uh, monuments in general, uh, palace and so on. And I decided that the almost the 100% the, the of the facade would be uh, built with this white stone. But uh, some other aspects, such as the idea of rhythm, the idea of uh, these flat facades, but that are intensive at the same time, operating with uh, the shallows, uh, these were very interesting aspects that I intended to explore. Part of our history uh, was was marked by this uh, uh, by the drama of a huge earthquake in seventy. 55 that destroyed uh, more than half of the city and this is a, a urban plan for the renovation for the reconstruction of the city that was quite ra radical at that time it was an opportunity for the city to 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 integrate uh, another layer another uh, concept of city with a big plaza uh, pass facing the river uh, where existed the previous one, 
uh, with uh, the Palace of the King. And this is a drawing uh, done by the, the architects responsible for, the, for this reconstruction. And in fact, if you look, uh, if you pay attention to this drawing, again the rhythms, again the, the white stone exists uh, in, this, in these verandas and uh, always vertical um, bands and horizontal lines made with stone that are part of our um, uh, architecture that is more common. Here you can see one of the main uh, or the main uh, roads downtown called Rua Augusta that leads to, to the Triumph Arch and to the, the big plaza and as you see uh, all these uh, windows uh, have this white stone and there are these uh, white lines uh, going through the, through the facades. And so uh, the project starts for the, the... The project is much about two different facades with two different conditions. One made of stone, the other made of glass and the house exists between these two uh, different realities. The stone facade faces public space, and the white and the glass facade faces the the garden and the fantastic views over the city and the river. But going back to the first main facade, these are early studies for the the elements of the facade. The vertical bands uh, are utilized here in a more free sense, and then uh, starting with this vertical bands, uh, bands combined with horizontal lines I started to create a kind of a first uh, grid of, uh, uh, of um, openings. And then they, uh, after this combination started to open voids inside these models. In the end this is a, a sketch of the final scheme. Uh, the facade in uh, the ground floor is very opaque and since I only had the dimension or the, 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 the width uh, that allowed to have a door, to have uh, uh, the door for the, for the garage and, uh, and um, the tops of the, of, the, of the main walls, I didn't have space for more than that. Only two stripes of glass to illuminate the garage that later was was taken out because it's impossible, it was impossible to introduce that and the only uh, strip of glass that remained was this to put lights in the entrance and the, uh, the, the um, basement. On the upper floors I operated with the most common dimension of window in Lisbon, I mean one meter per the total height of the floor in a more free sense that is common in the uh, buildings side by side with, with mine. But in a, in a very, uh, well, with, I was very um, um, anxious with the idea of creating connections with buildings side by side. This line was uh, continuous into my building, uh, this also and this also, in a way that the facade almost is the result of the prolongation of the, or the extensions of the main lines of the neighbors. It's the opposite facade facing them. And here you can understand part of the arguments I've expressed. Uh, the plans are very simple. I'm going, going to explain only the, 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 the overall structure. Downstairs we have the, 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 the living room and the dining room and the kitchen uh, related with the, the, the garden. And upstairs we have the bedrooms and on the top we have a, a library. Uh, but almost all the, the, the rooms have two doors in a way to uh, assure a more free sense of circulation uh, for people to go through this space without feeling trapped. You see some sections. And uh, here uh, you, can, you can understand the concept of this house between the, the stone facade, this white stone facade, the glass facade, and the interior made out of uh, uh, exposed concrete. And on the, on the ground floor, this 
this more friendly uh, pavement of the garden and on top to work with the traditional materials uh, these, uh, these uh, kind of stones of uh, tiles and bricks uh, that gives the, the roof the same color of the, the common roofs uh, in Lisbon. Uh, the garden I always call the archaeological space. I mean, I kept the walls. I didn't want to fix these walls much because I intended to, to, to fill the different time layers. And even the stones that I got from the demolished house were utilized to build these pavements where we have uh, dinner and uh, uh, breakfast when we can. And then the interior is a kind of uh, a concrete uh, structure. I mean, after we finished the, the structure, the space was more or less defined. And when I have to uh, introduce uh, more uh, walls or elements to separate space, I do it with, with, with uh, wood in order to introduce more uh, smooth scents, more warm scents, a more comfortable uh, sense. This is an image of the, the living room and that was the, the, um, the window of the living room facing the, the, um, the garden. Some details I intended to use very rough materials. This is the, the room, the, the bedroom, one example of one bedroom facing the main facade. It's the only, the only room where I decided to paint white the, the wall that is in opposition to the, to the, to the windows so that the, the natural light grows. And this is the, one of the ideas that I felt more important to give a sense that it's a long house, even if it's uh, small in each, uh, in each floor. And on top, where uh, I have this uh, view over the city and the Tagus uh, River. And of course, uh, because I feel that when we impose and uh, we impose too much, a fantastic view, the view becomes banal, becomes uh, even uh, aggressive. On the other side of this, uh, uh, of this uh, library that I have uh, upstairs, uh, I have this small patio with a lime tree uh, that you can see here. It's a very calm down space. And this is an example of the house with the objects, the more domestic and friendly aspect. And uh, during the night, uh, where the artificial light is clear, that is what thought to be uh, warm and comfortable and so on. Uh, the Maritime Museum uh, is placed in Ilhavu. Uh, Ilhavu is one city uh, that is uh, two, 200 kilometers to the north from Lisbon in Portugal and has the tradition of these uh, activities related with uh, uh, codfish fisheries, other activities in the sea and in the river. These are images from the 30s, I believe. Um, this activity was supported a lot by the fascist government that we had because it was related with the, the glorious imaginary of the Portuguese doing, during the, the discoveries. And this is an example of a kind of... A, it's a, a, a recycling project starting from this, this building. These are two images of the existing building. A building with many problems, like uh, uh, didn't have uh, air conditioner, didn't have a single door that could allow to put big objects like boats inside, uh, with problems with thieves and in very bad condition. And in terms of architecture, it was not a big deal. So the idea was to create a new vocabulary to swallow, in a certain sense, this uh, this uh, an interesting building. Uh, with a new uh, dimension that allows also to grow the, the collection and that was part of the program. Through this uh, round floor uh, plan you can see 
that uh, basically we extended this is the existing area that was restructured the auditorium the entrance the the um, permanent exhibitions area and uh, here the um, the administration and uh, over uh, uh, a water surface that we introduced that is part of the fire uh, system uh, temporary exhibitions volume and uh, by growing the building in L shape in this direction we could we could close this courtyard that previously was under well people would go there and paint the walls and so on and now it's more quiet uh, area it's from time to time occupied by exhibitions. Uh, here in these drawings, when you you can you can read, uh, I didn't explain previously that this is a, a volume that we added with the, the the system of vertical connections with ramps and uh, elevators that could allow finally the handicaps and the, the parents with kids to circulate easily from one floor to the other. <coughs> You can see the L shape grow. I mean, this is the space where they intended to have the 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 boats uh, that are taller and the volume uh, for the uh, temporary exhibitions. Going back to the to the sections, you can see this is the existing. We had to open on the ceiling new windows. I mean, skylights. Uh, getting the, in the, the appropriate light for the exhibitions and here is the, the, the room for the boats. Here you can see the facades, the ramps and the new, uh, the new doors that allow the objects to go inside. <coughs> this section is clear that we propose a very, very simple uh, architecture, I mean uh, an architecture done by very simple volumes uh, on the ground, uh, black, uh, black uh, slate, slate it's, uh, stone uh, walls and on the upper floor, uh, white plaster. And the main windows are the skylights that you see part here, but in this section you see that they are, um, they vary because we intended in a very banal uh, rectangular uh, room to introduce a kind of variation of light when we go through this very simple space. Images of the part of the demolish, uh, demolishing work and then the, the result. Uh, this simplicity was intended to balance somehow the existence, the existence of uh, a building in front of this that is very colorful and vicious and so on and we intended to have a more quiet uh, object here. Somehow you can feel some of our influences from coming from Albert Caesar and uh, for sure Albert Hout, the Finnish architect. And this is the, the volume uh, with the space for temporary exhibitions. That was uh, something we wanted to experiment because we have seen photographs of the old ships uh, that the Portuguese uh, used to, to, for, to travel for the discoveries. Part of them, of these ships, were were black because they were uh, painted, isolated with a material that we call breu, and to, that gives to the ships a very ambiguous uh, outlook. And we decided to experiment this. This is the interior of this volume, the space for the temporary exhibitions. And here you can see a model uh, of the investigation of this space. This is circulation area where you can see the, the ramps. Well, this is a, a new part of the, the volume, the, the museum that was added to the previous one. And here uh, people can face the, the um, fire department or fire system uh, water deposit that is this kind of lake. Uh, well, we intended to have this, uh, the presence of the water that is related with the activities exhibited in the interior. This is a view from outside, and these reflections, these uh, effects that are part of the atmosphere that we intended to produce.
10 years after we finished this construction, we were uh, contracted to uh, do a project of an extension. This, is the, this extension was supposed to be an aquarium of codfish because uh, Portuguese know a lot about codfish, but many Portuguese never saw a fish, a codfish, a live codfish. And of course, a, a, a codfish is not a triangle like this, this one, like a sole. It's a, this is a codfish salted and dried. This is a live codfish. And in terms of urban reality, the idea was to connect different programs. This, this was the existing museum. This was a school that was supposed now to be utilized by firms related with uh, sea activities. And here would be placed the aquarium. So the, the, the program is much about connecting, connecting these three buildings um, taking people in, through a journey uh, across the, or uh, around the new aquarium that is going to be placed here. Um, like, like the majority of our projects, we start doing these very, very small models with the program and by uh, a sequence of uh, um, closing and closing and uh, bigger scales, we, we conquer the idea and we define the idea with more uh, precision, step by step. In the end, this is a, an aerial uh, view or a plan uh, of the project. You can see the connection point with the previous museum is done here, and then it's a kind of a, a spiral which, with, uh, through which people go around from top to the bottom of the aquarium, or can decide to go to this other building. This, this is a, a model uh, where the, 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 the building is, uh, is um, uh, with the, the future urban area that is not yet built in front. The idea is that the, the aquarium is going to be the essential or the organizing piece of this new square, and this was discussed uh, with the architects that are, or the urban planners that are doing this at this time. Uh, of course, now the entrance is from the main uh, museum or from the, the road to the other entrance because this now is closed. We decided to operate with the same colors of the previous um, museum, but uh, in opposition, I mean, on the upper floor where the museum is white, we utilize black, it's black zinc, in fact, and on the bottom we utilize a material uh, which is white concrete or painted white concrete. Here you see the connection and the, the spiral around the, the aquarium and the, the, the linkage to the former school. It's, a very, it's about fluidity, about movement, about somehow the... Uh, actually, it's a success between schools. Many kids go there uh, every week. And uh, maybe because uh, codfish, besides sardines, is one of our main uh, national symbols. Here is the, the, the plan, the, the upper floor plan, where you can see the corridor to the to the aquarium, and here down you can see the the entrance from the from the from the road and the connection to the school. So in fact, this is a kind of a bridge. It's a long bridge connecting the aquarium that is here to the to the existing uh, museum. So it's that the, we didn't build this. Uh, big structure flying because we like flying buildings is because we had to operate over existing roads and uh, that was the initial problem of the program. This is the nature of the work with the zinc in tension like the volume that is uh, connecting and in a certain level in movement seen from the top of the existing museum and 
there's a few moments where when we go in this uh, circuit we can look to the existing museum or to the urban areas around. Here you can see the, the moment where the new touches the existing and the small houses around. And here you can see that uh, somehow the existing and the new uh, built uh, a whole. This is the connection from the existing to the, the, the moment where we can look at the internal courtyard of the museum. And then a progressive trip in the direction of the aquarium. This secondary school uh, is not far from Lisbon and uh, it's a renovation project. Uh, uh, this school existed, as you see here, six uh, old pavilions disattached from each other. There was no a sense of an uh, object, of, a, of a, a building. This was a collection of, a, of pavilions uh, this, uh, in different, uh, in different uh, heights and uh, uh, side by side with the sports pavilion and uh, side by side uh, with a highway and this is a sort of the urban uh, aspect where the school uh, uh, exists these are images of the existing buildings we only decided to demolish uh, this pavilion and one of the six uh, because we found somehow that these um, kind of uh, stiff boxes, very precise boxes, could be appropriate uh, by renovation to introduce the more uh, repetitive rooms like classrooms, labs and so on. Uh, so first we, we, we had a program which was uh, more common areas such as a library, um, an auditorium, uh, and spaces that they call learning, <coughs> learning streets. I mean, uh, it's connection spaces uh, where many things can happen and where the students can deal with different activities and be captured for things unexpectedly. And so we decided to utilize this new program like a very a plastic, a very uh, flexible structure that would connect the stiff and disattached boxes. Uh, even to an, an handicap would be impossible to connect from one building <coughs> to the other and by this strategy all the students can go easily f uh, from one, one floor to the other. These are some experiments we did, but in the end, it's much about this uh, relation between the mathematical boxes and the more fluid and free space that connects the boxes. Here you can see the existing pavilions and the new structure and the patios or the voids between the, the, the pavilions where people can stay or can experiment uh, agriculture and here a uh, uh, bigger open area to play. And of course the introduction of a sense of limits of the building but always open with uh, entrances not a, a very rigid limit uh, I believe. This is a real view and the entrance Uh, here you can see one of the existing uh, pavilions completely tra transformed, I mean, facing, uh, facing south. Uh, the windows are very simple strips uh, like this one. Facing north, we transformed the upper window to introduce more light to the labs. The limits that are possible to, to cross, not so rigid. 
internal uh, internal patios and the relation between the learning uh, street and the, the main patio. This is the interior of the existing uh, pavilions now as it is after the renovation. The, uh, the exigence related with air conditioner, it's almost idiot in Portugal. We must, they impose air conditioner systems in a big scale, so we had to propose this kind of scenarios. And then the aspect of the internal space that are fluid and informal and somehow free. This is the last project that I'm going to, to show you. And uh, this is uh, a very interesting project in my career because we have refused twice to do this project because we had a kind of ideological problem with this project because we don't like these mega structures, commercial structures close to cities that uh, uh, or that are really aggressive to the existing traditional uh, commercial um, shops. But uh, in the end, after uh, two attentives of the Dutch clients, we decided to accept. They dismissed uh, two uh, English uh, companies that were doing the project, and uh, we have negotiated with them that our ideas would be, in fact, followed and respected because these processes with big labels like uh, uh, H and M and Zara and others are really aggressive and the architect loses a lot the power to control uh, his work uh, in the middle of this especially if the, 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 the construction is delayed everything in the end is done without the control of the architect so after we have the guarantees that uh, they would respect our work, we decided to start. First we intended to be only as uh, con uh, conceptual advisors, but in the end, after a period of involvement of us in this process, we did uh, the majority of the project. And this shopping center is located in front of a highway that links Lisbon to Sintra which is a village uh, 20 kilometers far to the west. And in a kind of uh, industrial uh, neighborhood with all the companies trying to, uh, to communicate with, uh, with, uh, with the um, highway. And so this, uh, of course, is also a big issue, a big, a big question to explore in a commercial area. We did this photograph, of course, it was related with this book that everyone knows, The Learning from Las Vegas of Robert Ventura and Denise Scott Brown. And uh, that this was the first question, how this building would re relate with this uh, highway, uh, with the uh, people that is going to travel um, every day, um, more than 100,000 people uh, cross this highway to Lisbon, to work in Lisbon. Another important aspect was that the building is here. It's a existing, it was an existing supermarket that would be uh, refurbished and uh, a new addition would complete the, the design of the building. And from there we could have a, a con um, an alignment a contact, uh, visual contact with the palace in Sintra, which is this uh, fantastic, fantastic building uh, that you can find there. These are some early uh, schemes. You can see what existed. Part was to be demolished, this part, and then part was to uh, be an addition. When we uh, came up to the project, uh, we had to start from the project that the English firm uh, was doing. So we had to step by step build a different uh, approach. Uh, this is the, the model of the existing project. And these were different attempts of our office to create a new reality starting from that. But then uh, we realized that uh, some, another aspect 
that is crucial, that interested us to investigate, was the shopping mall, the, shop, the, 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 the corridor of the shopping center. The idea of someone that maybe feels uh, lost, maybe if we could create very strong concepts to each corridor, to each mall, people can easily uh, understand where they are and they can remind even when they are out uh, going, to going home, they, they, have a, they can have a clear idea uh, where they, they were. I mean, at the same time, creating the possibility that uh, the space, internal space resists uh, to the labels that are going to be introduced uh, with the shops. <coughs> Uh, so this is a model that was done um, after that uh, conceptual sketch with the different malls. And uh, this is a group of, uh, of models we did trying to explore these different atmospheres, different natures of uh, uh, shopping mall. And when these different lines and natures cross we produce a kind of plaza covered with uh, skylights in a more intensive moment where people can meet. This model is much about the relation that we intended to create with the highway, with the with the, with the, the name of the of the of the village Sintra and the, the, the hyperstructure that puts this on the on the, um, in relation with the, with the highway. This is one of the final models where you can see the highway is here. This is the, the main entrance related with the, the highway, more in terms of visual com communication. And you see the roof cross with these uh, skylights um, introducing the, the natural light in the, in the shopping malls and the future garden that is going to be built on this top. I'm going to show only this, this plan so that you can, an internal plan so that you can understand the intern, internal nature of the circuits, the main entrance here, and the roof, and the, the sections through the building. This was the, the, the biggest building we had to deal with. It was 240,000 uh, square meters, a big majority or big part parking under the building, and some drawings. And in the end, uh, the, the way it looks from the, from the highway. And this, this, uh, this communication is produced, if you see more close, uh, with this uh, big structure that builds the, with fragments, uh, the name of the, the village. One of the entrance for the cars. And these uh, metal structures are in fact uh, extensions of each conceptual line, extensions of each mall that you are going to see uh, in one of the next images. This is another extension of one of the, the malls. This is one of the, mall, of the malls with a very specific nature. This is another mall. In fact, we start thinking uh, about the, the, the idea of, um, of the theater, of walking uh, in theater. And um, uh, it was funny that later they decided to place here uh, Hall X and all the, the shops that sell uh, jewels and so on. But in both cases, we feel that uh, uh, when we had the labels and the stores and uh, all this uh, noise, let's say, the space and the notion of architecture uh, resists. And uh, I, I feel that it's even better when we have this, uh, all this um, um, density. This was made of concrete. It's another mall. And this where the restaurants and uh, places to drink uh, beer and so on, uh, it's made of, of, of uh, wood. And when two of these, two of these lines uh, cross each other, 
we had this kind of not plazas, but this this more open spaces with uh, the skylights. And up there, with the with the possibility to see at the top of the mountain the uh, Sintra Palace. And I'm closing with this image. In fact, uh, maybe even during the night, the concept is more uh, well succeeded in this relation with the with the highway. Well, it was a project. It was what what was very uh, unusual for our scale, I must say, because we are a small office, more with more experience in small projects. But somehow, uh, I feel that in the end was a project where we learned a lot, and it was important for us to investigate notions we were able to 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 examine and to explore. So thank you very much.